from Brown, I'm the founder of Healthy Seminars, and I want to have a big thank you uh, to our moderators today, Sandra Grassa and Lorianne Slaunwhite. Again, thank you for all the stuff you do behind the scenes and in front of the scenes to make these lectures available. And then the people that come present. So today we got Yvonne Farrell. A big thank you to you, Yvonne, um, for putting together some content um, so we can connect and, and do some, um, some learning together. Just going to do uh, some, some housekeeping. So this is part of the Community Unity Immunity Lecture Series that we started in March of 2020 um, with the intention, the purpose is to create community, to stay connected during times of COVID. Um, nobody predicted uh, um, a year later we would still be doing this, but here we are still doing it. So um, we're getting to stay connected this way. I want to let you know the way we're doing it as of 2021 with Healthy Seminars is the live webinars, if you attend live, they're free. The Community Union and Uni Lectures are free. And if you miss the live webinar, then um, they get archived into the community library. And for a subscription, um, you can access uh, these recordings along with 100, as of today, I think we have 187 and counting. So if you're looking for any of these live webinars that we've done over the last 10 years, we put 10 years of archived recordings into the community library, um, then you can contact us to find out where that is, but you can subscribe to the community library and access all these uh, past lectures and the ones that are coming if you miss them live. And again, that's available for a subscription. I do wanna let you know, if you go to the resource page, resources, there's a link on the homepage, um, there's a calendar, so here we are March 29th and let you know what's happening throughout the month. If you check out April 2021, it is busy with lots of free community live webinars and also during the weekends, lots of uh, CEU approved uh, lectures as well. Just to let you know what's happening, what's coming, um, we have today uh, Tao Yang and Xiao Yin, the pandemic's gift of self-awareness um, from Yvonne. And then um, we have also this week uh, a Psalm Korean acupuncture course, uh, a lecture, not a course, but a lecture by Toby Daly. Um, then we got a Master Dong lecture by Sean Goodman on treating loss of smell post COVID um, using the Master Dong system. Um, and then we got um, Ross Rosen doing a talk. So the community, these lectures, by the way, they're free if you come live. You can access the recordings through the subscription to the library. There are no CEUs uh, for these, they're just for the love of learning, as you can see. Um, we got an herbal one from Sally Rappaport, the end, another one related to COVID long haulers. So looking at classical herbal formulas for long haulers. I do wanna let you know that Yvonne Farrell has a mentorship program um, called Acupuncture for Surviving Adversity. I'm gonna ask her to talk a little bit about it. It contains the six uh, modules of lectures that she's offering through Healthy so people can do it a la carte or you can do it through the mentorship. So many of us, we miss out and want that peer support. So you have the peer support that your colleagues in this cohort are sharing and discussing through the forums um, in the mentorship. And then you have office hours uh, as a group with Yvonne as well throughout several months where you're going over the material, you're going over case studies and get to ask questions. So this really takes it to another level where you're not just watching lectures that we often do online, but now you're getting to interact with your colleagues and with the presenter. So you can really deepen your understanding and make it more practical in the clinic, clinical setting. So I just wanted to let you know about that. And then lastly, um, if you go to our upcoming live webinars, these are the things that are also on the resource calendar, but it just lets you know what is happening for CEU approved courses. So you can see we have several courses, live CEUs. If you are in California, British Columbia, you need live CEUs. We got lots in April, over 30 hours of live CEUs. You do need to be there live online to get the live CEUs. I just want to highlight one because it's timely. April 21st, it's one during the weekday. We got an ethics approval for anti-racism. Unfortunately, the people that aren't racist will attend this, <laughs> most likely. Um, but we wish the people that need a little bit of um, um, awareness around this topic, especially in today, 2021, it seems like it is um, really important. And it is for two ethics for those with Texas, NCCO, and British Columbia. You get two ethics for that. So you can just check out what we have happening um, throughout the month of April. I will let you know that April 1st, the Integrated Fertility Symposium registration opens on April 1st, so check that out on the website. All right, um, let's bring up Yvonne's PowerPoint. I, again, a big welcome and a thank you
to Dr. Yvonne Farrell. She has written um, one book that's published, a second one that's on, us, on its way. Um, she has spoken around the world and has given incredible lectures on healthy seminars, both through the community series and then also through CEU proof courses. Lots of great content. And now she's stepped up for us and she's created a mentorship program that starts April 25th, registration's open. Yvonne, if you can give a little background about yourself and also let everybody know what to expect in this mentorship program as you move into this um, lecture on Taoyang and Xiaoyin, the pandemic's gift of self-awareness. Thanks, Lauren. A um, little bit about myself, okay? I've been practicing and teaching since 1997, but basically in the last 10 years or so, I've been focusing mostly on CEU courses to licensed acupuncturists. Um, I'm a channel acupuncturist, so I uh, probably do acupuncture more than herbs in my clinic, and I don't really practice TCM. I practice uh, channel theory, and I typically teach that too. Uh, in recent years, I've sort of become known as a teacher of the eight extraordinary vessels, um, which I love, but I actually use the whole system. The mentorship that Lauren was talking about came about because for the last three years, I've actually been doing, well, three years prior to the pandemic, I was actually doing an in-person mentorship, which um, I was really enjoying. So we were trying to find a way to accomplish this online. And we know that there are a lot of things that you don't get when you're not in person, but I think we've created a format um, that will allow us to go through the whole channel system um, in these six, six hour lectures, but also in between the lectures, there's homework and exercises you can do to deepen your understanding of these systems and there's case studies and office hours. So there's a lot of um, communication back and forth between the classes that I hope will help you to embody the system and learn it in a deeper way. Um, so that's the mentorship. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, even though the online medium was not uh, my first preference for teaching. It has become uh, one of my favorite ways of connecting with people now since we're uh, limited in our options and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope it's going to be great. Um, I also have really enjoyed these community lectures, these little one hour tidbits where we sort of get to connect over one little idea or one little concept. And so when Lauren asked me to do another one, um, I was thinking about, you know, not so much the silver lining of the pandemic because their silver lining makes it sound like there's sort of something precious um, in the face of all this tragedy and adversity. But I mean, if you're going to have to live under the kind of stress that we've lived under for the last year, and if you're going to suffer losses, either in uh, life or health or income or um, schooling or whatever it is, then, then you want to find some purpose in that. You want to find some meaning in that. So I started thinking about the relationship between Tai Yang and Xiao Yin. And when I talk about that, I'm not talking about Shan Hun Lin theory. I'm not talking about the... Um, invasion of disease moving through the six channel system. Really what I'm talking about are the yang channels in relationship to the yin channels. So what happens to us under these circumstances in terms of our relationship between outside and inside? And so I began to look at this as a gift this last year as a gift of self-awareness, which allowed us to take this circumstance, if you will, um, and 
uh, learn something from it. So we just take an overview, first of all, of Taiyang and Xiaoyin. Taiyang, greater yang, right? So that's the urinary bladder channel and the small intestine channel. This is, of all of the divisions, the only fully exterior one. So it represents the outside. It is the filter between what's going on inside and the world around us. Um, it is the largest superficial cutaneous area of the body. It covers more of the body than any other um, channel system. Um, it is representative from a channel theory point of view of Wei Qi. So it's about protection. It's about interface with the outside world, about protecting ourselves, about defending ourselves from what is other what is outside, if you will. You think about Taiyang in terms of invasion of pathogenic cold. This is the system that opens and closes the, the pores. So yes, it keeps uh, wind cold out, but it opens and closes the pores and keeps everything out that might be deemed pathogenic in nature. Um, it engages fluids in a way that allows for sweating so that we can let go of things or fluid metabolism to create a buffer between what is outside and what is inside. So we're talking about using through these two channels, the urinary bladder and the small intestine, um, qi, defensive qi and fluids as a way of protecting ourselves from what is out there that might be too much, that might be overwhelming, that might be toxic in any way, shape or form. But if this is something that doesn't allow things in, then it is also a filter that moderates how much outward expression there is. And so we can think of this as a sort of gatekeeper between what we take in and what we let go of or what we express outward in a way. So that system, as we'll see in a minute, has been tremendously taxed in the last year in a multitude of ways. In particular, the pandemic at the top of the list, but this system has been taxed uh, in many, many, many ways um, in the last year. And uh, we've tried, we need to now try to find a way to manage that form of protection and downregulate it in a way that we're not continuing to protect ourselves when that is not as necessary or essential. So we have governance of the outside. Then with Xiaoyin, lesser yin, we have